we've had a lot of questions about how we run our adoption program here at Snake Discovery. So today we're going to show you how the process works to surrender an animal, how we do a health inspection, how we quarantine and set up our animals, and finally, how we adopt them out. So today, let me introduce you to Adoption Island. Since we opened last year, we have found good homes for 250 50 surrendered reptiles and amphibians, which just blows me away. So I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to have Adoption Island so that we can take in reptiles that are either unwanted or just surrendered because life happens and you're unable to keep a reptile for whatever reason. And then we can take care of it and find it a good forever home. So I'm really excited that it's working so well. And I think what we're, what we're gonna do today is share with our procedures on how animals are surrendered, what we do as uh, once they arrive and are in our, in our care, and then how we we handle adoptions and making sure they go to good homes. So this way, if you're thinking of starting a rescue or you currently run a rescue, maybe there's something in here that you can learn from or maybe it'll help you out. Or on the contrary, if you have suggestions, like further suggestions for us, you can add them in the comments below because we're changing things all the time, it seems here. So who's that? This, this is Charlie. She was actually featured in our recent photography video, but she was still getting some foot baths to take care of some dirty feet she had when she was uh, surrendered to us. But now all that's cleaned up, so she's actually available for adoption. Yeah, Charlie, the bearded dragon. Charlie. Yeah, she's a sweetie. Hopefully she gets a good home soon. <laughs> she's, Andy oh my gosh. Mountain Charlie. <laughs> gosh, we don't need memories of those days. <laughs> yes, of, we do. Those are amazing YouTube. videos. Oh my goodness. We're going to move on. <laughs> We're going to take this step by step from the day the animal gets surrendered to the day the animal gets adopted out. Oh, hi, Sharon. Aw, Sharon came to our voices. Aw, hi, cutie. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> well, we are going to be accompanied by Sharon as yep. well. Awesome. All right, so... We are going to start with what we have people fill out when they want to surrender an animal. There isn't like an appointment necessary for this at all. We just are kind of, we just have open doors. So uh, people can fill out the statement of surrender, which will kind of fill us in with how the animal has been taken care of thus far. Because if we see medical issues arise during our initial inspection or during quarantine, we can often go back to their statement of surrender and see kind of how they were taken care of. And that, that might give us some insight to what's causing those health issues. So things we ask for are the uh, the type of the animal, the animal's name, because I mean, we like to keep their names oh, if yeah. we can. Maybe like a quarter of the animals that get surrendered don't have a name, so then we have fun, we come up with names ourselves. Yep. And we talk, or we ask them how long they've had the animal, because sometimes people have an animal dropped off with them, and they just can't take care of it, so they've had it for like a day, and they just bring it here. In which case, not much of this gets filled out, and we don't know much about the animal's history. So we just ask people to fill in what they can, or what they know for the animal. Things like what they've been eating, any supplements, any special lighting, what they're using for substrate, uh, stuff like that can help us kind of pinpoint if like they're kept on the wrong substrate, maybe they could have an impaction issue if they're not eating or, you know, we can just kind of put the puzzle pieces together. So this really helps us out the more information we have for those animals. And then finally, there's like a note section, stuff like that. So this was derived or based off of our local herpetological society's surrender or uh, yeah, surrender adoption program. We've made some tweaks for information that we think is still beneficial to us that the other one didn't have. So we've kind of built our own and it seems to work really well. It also is an agreement that says they are surrendering the animal to us and they can't come back and get it. Yes, so if you are thinking about running a rescue, it definitely has to state something along, along the lines that transfers ownership of the animal to your facility because if they surrender the animal and then want it back, that's kind of a tough area. So this, how it's worded does transfer ownership to you. So you don't have to run into those confusing times. All right. Say the owner has surrendered their animal. They've filled out this form. The first thing we do before we even move the animal into an enclosure is do an initial health inspection. So let's go through what that entails. This is Slim Shady, a leopard gecko that was recently surrendered to us. So we're going to use him as an example for how we do the initial health inspection. We're for, I guess, privacy reasons, not going to use his actual surrender form because uh, we don't want to show that information because it does have a name and a signature. Instead, we just kind of did a mock-up one for him. Now, basically, we're going to go through this step by step and show you what we look for with each animal that gets surrendered. And we're going to just circle which answer is applicable here. So we're going to start with his weight. He actually is, he's a beefy leopard gecko, I'll give him that, but he is a good weight. So we're going to write, uh, good. Posture. This one, however, if you look at how he stands, and for this, we're just going to let him walk around a little bit. He walks fine. But look at his head. His head is quite tilted. So we're going to write down that he has poor posture and he has head tilt. So I wonder what could cause that. We'll go back and refer to his surrender form on the other side. Oh, look at that. 
He has Enigma gene or Enigma syndrome. So Enigma is a gene in leopard geckos that often causes uh, neurological issues. So that would explain his head tilt. In a lot of other animals, ear infections can cause head tilt issues, especially in mammals. But since he has the Enigma syndrome or the Enig Enigma gene, uh, that just explains it right here that that's what's causing the head tilt. So it's nothing to really be concerned about. It's just, uh, unfortunately, just a side effect of his genetics. Moving on, his hydration looks great. And basically what I'm looking for is just wrinkly skin or sunken in eyes, which are both signs of dehydration, neither of which he is displaying at all. He's got nice taut skin and he has nice hydrated and wide looking eyes. Even though he doesn't want to look at the camera, he <laughs> just wants to look at me. I am the star. Do you see me? I'm the star. <laughs> right. So we're going to write good hydration, energy level. He's been moving all around. Yeah. Like he is, he's got great energy. So he is very alert, not lethargic. His vent. Let's check out his vent. And actually Whoa. what you can do, you can either restrain a leopard gecko like this on either side of their head or simply people will use their index and middle finger like this. I prefer to use my thumb because I feel like I have a little bit more control. So we're going to flip them over. You're not going to like this, but I'm sorry. We're going to look at his vent. Oh, he's definitely a male. You can see oh, the yeah. you can see the pores right there and the bulges at the base of his tail right there. So that looks awesome. Sorry, bud. I know we had to look there. Vent is clear. Eyes. We already looked at those. Those are clear. Nostrils. Let's take a peek. Do we have any stuck shed in them? Do we have any um, sinus issues that are displaying themselves with his nostrils? Nope. Those look good. Nostrils are clear. Toes. This is often something that I have to circle missing toes when it comes to leopard geckos. But looking at him, his toes look fantastic. Five on that foot. Five on that foot. Just hiding one. Five and five. Yep. So he has all his toes, which is fantastic for a leopard gecko. He was really well taken care of by his previous owner. This is awesome. His nails look great as well. It's hard to see on a leopard gecko if they need trimming or not. Typically they don't anyway. This really only gets circled for bearded dragons. His tail. Oh, hey, Sharon. How's it going? <laughs> Just checking out your selection. <laughs> his tail. This is another one that we have to often circle, like partially missing or regenerated for leopard geckos. But look at this. He has a beautiful tail. Beautiful tail. That looks amazing. So original and complete. Any blemishes, cuts, scabs, or scars present? Got like a little something right here. A little. Yeah, that is interesting. I wonder what caused that. So for that, we are going to circle. Yes, we do see a scar on his back. It looks like it's healed though, so it's nothing to be concerned about right yep. now. Any kinks in his spine? This is something that we can feel down the back of snakes and we can just look on a leopard gecko. Oh, he arches back when I did that. I didn't feel anything out of the ordinary. It looks very nice. So no kinks in the spine. Any stuck shed that needs attending to? Nope, he's good on that too. And any external parasites? This is really more applicable to snakes and looking for snake mites, but it can happen to lizards as well. I don't see any um, external parasites on him. And bearded dragons, check for yellow fungus. He's not a bearded dragon, so it doesn't apply. But we do check our bearded dragons for yellow fungus. Yeah, yellow fungus is a terrible disease. <laughs> Let me show you a picture. All right. This is our employee's guide or reference for an example of yellow fungus. It is an incurable fungus that is, as far as I'm aware, it is completely, it's always fatal to bearded dragons. It just slowly kills them over time. And since it's highly contagious, it can spread to other bearded dragons very easily. So unfortunately, our policy here is if a bearded dragon does arrive with yellow fungus, which it hasn't happened yet, thankfully, but we do check them. And if it were to happen, we would bring it to our trusted veterinarian to confirm that it is in fact yellow fungus. And and if it is, we would have it humanely euthanized. We do have it in our statement of surrender that if an animal is surrendered with too severe of health problems, and yellow fungus would be an example of one of those, that it will be humanely euthanized. Thankfully, we've never had to do this, and yes. we will try our every effort to make sure we don't have to do something we've like that. We've had some bad looking animals come in too, we and we've have, turned them around and yes. found them great homes. We did have two leopard geckos come in that were just so underweight and dehydrated. We tried what we could, we brought them to the vet, we tube fed them, we treated them for various things that they had, and they were just sadly too far gone. So yeah. those two leopard geckos in particular didn't make it. Since having like 275 probably, animals surrendered to us we have about 25 right now available only losing two of them isn't too bad yeah so i mean overall we've had really good luck with animals being surrendered that are at least somewhat well taken care of and that's why we have an open door policy is we'd rather see a neglected animal come in sooner rather than later for being judged exactly we're not going to ask questions we're not going to judge at all you can drop it off even anonymous anonymously as long as you sign the paperwork but yeah i think uh 
it's a sad truth if you run a rescue. You are occasionally going to receive animals that are in just so bad of shape that you can do anything, everything you possibly can, and you can't turn them around. So yeah. I didn't mean to make this section uh, so depressing all of a sudden, so let's keep going with his health check. All we have left are notes and treatments if necessary, concluding the exam. All I'm going to put here, he's a really healthy gecko. There is one thing I'm going to add down here for our employees, though. Thanks, bud, for climbing on my hand. <laughs> I did notice on his surrender form, granted this is a remade one, but it was on his original surrender form too, actually. He prefers being tongue fed and that's probably because of the neurological issues. He has a tough time hunting on his own, but he is a great eater. Just needs some tongue feeding. Needs to be tongue fed, but there are no other treatments that are needed for him, thankfully. Yep. Yeah, this is a very healthy little gecko. Aren't you, Slim Shady? You are so cute. Oh my gosh, I love you. So that's what our initial exam consists of, is just going down that list. Obviously, there's some things that aren't applicable to various reptiles like snakes. You don't have to count their toes on the snake. You never know, those toeless most, snakes. Most snakes are I've seen are missing all their toes and it's so sad. I know all of them are. It's yeah. really too bad. I've seen like one or two that had a couple. Okay, now I want to see those. <laughs> Look, Sharon um, made a rounds. Wow, she made a loop. <laughs> she's going on her uh, nightly mall walk. <laughs> yeah, she's a mall walker. <laughs> Assuming they have a clean bill of health, so the inspection goes over well, they don't have anything serious that needs attending to right away, and assuming we have space up front in Adoption Island, we have an opening, the next thing we'll do is our staff, our awesome staff here at Snake Discovery, will set up an enclosure for the surrendered animal. So we're going to set him in here. This is Slim Shady's enclosure here. And we'll take care of them in here for a brief quarantine period of a week. And a week doesn't sound very long, but a lot of health issues and reptiles, in our experience, are going to be shown within that week. But some aren't. So we still recommend that whoever adopts these animals continues quarantining them for at least a month or so. But we can see the majority, vast majority of health issues within that first week. And assuming they're healthy, they're eating, they're pooping fine, sometimes like shedding in our care, we keep an eye on that too, making sure everything is green, then they are. Uh, available for adoption. Once the animal is moved into Adoption Island, we just take care of them as normal and we monitor their eating habits and pooping habits. And for snakes, since they don't eat every day, we make sure that snakes take at least one meal before they're able to be adopted out so their quarantine might be extended past a week depending on their feeding schedule. And for lizards, we just make sure that they're eating regularly and passing that food uh, regularly too. For some instances, they have unique diets when they are surrendered to us. For example, this bearded dragon here was fed uh, just pellets for six years. So we're keeping a close eye on him to see if he's able or willing to eat salads, like greens, healthy greens, as well as bugs. I don't think he's ever eaten bugs before. We may have to cheat a little bit and put some pellets on top of his salad. I think that's the plan for this guy, is to make sure that he has some pellets just to kind of lure him into a salad. Hi, are you watching? Oh, if that's right, you're just sassy. No, he just wants to go back and that head bob. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a head bobber. Yeah, there you go. I'll show you for taking me out and putting me on camera. <laughs> for only eating pellets? He actually looks really good. Yeah, he doesn't like, look too bad. It's kind of surprising. But yeah, once we can monitor that they are eating well, pooping well, and their quarantine is up, then they're available for adoption. So now that we've gone over our policies and procedures for accepting and setting up and quarantining new animals in our Adoption Island, I figured we'd show you what we currently have in Adoption Island yeah. and what's uh, available and needs a new home. Shameless plug for adopt these animals and give them yeah. a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you already met Slim Shady. Next door, we have George, another leopard gecko. He is also not a very good hunter. He also has the Enigma sy uh, Syndrome or a gene. Uh, he's Where's hiding. He? I don't know. He's hiding right now. Haha, I found you, George. Here's George. <laughs> hiding up front. You also already met Charlie, the bearded dragon. Oh, she was just digging under her paper. Look at that smug look. You might notice that the enclosures are kind of basic. They're kind of open, barren, not a whole lot in there. And that's because this is just a temporary enclosure for them. They're only going to be in here for a couple of weeks. Most animals do get adopted within probably two weeks after their quarantine is up and so they're officially available. But we keep it nice and open because then the animal is more viewable and more likely to get adopted. But also we can keep it more sterile and clean. So when an animal gets adopted out, we can take all of these products out, we can clean them, sanitize them, clean out the entire enclosure, and that's why we have the vision cages here is because this is one solid piece of plastic so we can sanitize the entire thing. There aren't any nooks and crannies from separate pieces being put together. Instead, it's just one solid piece, so it's, it works really well for an adoption program. Yep. Underneath Charlie, we have Poppy, an albino 
Uh, black rat snake, where are you? There she is. She's not very friendly, are you? No, you're gonna need an experienced handler. You like to bite, but that's okay. You're very pretty, so you kind of get away with it. Hi, yeah, your tail buzzing. <laughs> All right, fine, here you go. Why do you like your new cave back there? Underneath Poppy, we have a beautiful boa constrictor, actually. This is Mysterio, and- Oh, I named him. Yeah, you named him. <laughs> uh, he is a three-year-old bo male boa constrictor, and we're just waiting until he takes a meal before, uh, like successfully takes a meal before we adopt him out, so we know or can confirm that he's eating frozen thawed. Sometimes they come in and they only eat live, so we want to be able to know what they eat so that whoever adopts them can feed them what they prefer. Um, we have Odin, another bearded dragon over here. He is a beautiful leatherback bearded dragon, so he's got a really nice smooth back. Oh, you're pancaking out, aren't you? Unfortunately, he has a stubby tail. Like, Aww. a really stubby tail. <laughs> but he's a gorgeous beardy and really healthy looking too. We're gonna set you back in your uh, basking light. I hope he finds a good home. His quarantine actually wraps up tomorrow, which is pretty cool. You getting jealous? Make sure. Oh, I'm sorry, uh... Odin. Odin's a female. Sorry, wrong pronouns. And then there's Ares, which you already saw earlier. And above yep. him is Scout, a veiled chameleon. We're actually hanging on to her. I don't know why that says available. She's not available right now. We're hanging on to her for a little bit longer because we think she's gravid. We think she has a bunch of eggs in her. So we have kind of a lay box in there so she can dig in that soil, deposit those eggs, and then we can adopt her out. Unless someone very experienced wants to, uh, with a chameleon specifically wants to take on the project instead. So she's kind of a special case. She can't just get adopted to someone who doesn't quite know chameleons and their needs. On the other side of Adoption Island, we've got Jerry, another leopard gecko. They're pretty commonly surrendered Aww. species here. Hi, he's Jerry. A, Jerry. He's like, no, I'm sleeping. Go away. I guess he's sleeping. He acts okay. like me in the morning. Yeah, exactly. And another leopard gecko named Eminem over here. Oh. She also has the Enigma morph, so she has some neurological issues, so she's another one that might need some special care or some hand feeding. She's back in there. She's looking. She loves that cave. Aww. Down here we have a beautiful pastel ball python. Hi girl. This is Sally and she is so big. You are a huge ball python. Yes you are. We're just waiting for her to take a meal as well before we adopt her out. So as soon as she eats she'll be ready actually pretty soon too. Mm -hmm. Hi. You are so pretty. Some people might be wondering because I know a lot of rescues don't adopt out animals if the intention is to breed that animal. That's more in like dogs, cats, birds especially. We here don't mind if you have the intention of breeding the animal you, that you adopt, assuming it's a healthy animal and doesn't have any genetic flaws that might get passed down. This, for example, is a beautiful female pastel ball python. She would make an excellent breeder, actually. So we wouldn't be opposed to her going to a breeder home as long as they're going to take good care of her. However, do know that when you get something from somebody who doesn't know exactly what it was from the breeder, you'll never actually know what genes there are. There is always that risk. Yeah, we know she's a pastel, but who knows what else is in her. But she's gorgeous, aren't you? Yeah, you're a beautiful ball python. Below Sally, we've got Cookie, a beautiful black and white Cali King. Just striking colors, too. Mm -hmm. There's somebody coming in tomorrow who's looking for a king snake, and I think they're gonna adopt her, or him, sorry, him. That's gonna <laughs> you're be just getting all the pronouns wrong. I'm tonight. getting all the pronouns wrong, I guess. Uh, just today, we had this fat little adorable Pac-Man frog. He's a little nervous since we just set him up. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty humid in there right now, which is why you can't really see him <laughs> through the condensation, but he likes it that way. Yeah. So that works out really well. We have, I should mention this, we have both UVB and the basking light on top of each enclosure, which means for amphibians and crested geckos, we have to turn off the basking light. We only have the UVB light in there because we don't want it to get too hot. So uh -huh. his is a little bit dimmer because the basking light is off. Eminem came out. Hey, Eminem, you coming out to say hi? <laughs> Aww. She's so cute, yeah. oh my goodness. Uh, over here, we have a gorgeous snow phase Honduran milk snake that was surrendered. This is a beautiful it's snake. It's crazy that it's pink. Yeah. It's never gonna show up on camera that way. It's gonna look white, Aww, but is it, it is pink. Uh, with some with some white stripes too. And he was very well taken care of in his previous home. Uh, the owner just had to downsize and couldn't keep him and brought him here because he knew we could find him a good home. He's available tomorrow. That's yeah, why. Yeah, he'll get adopted uh, tomorrow. That's why you're still here. Yeah, you'll find a home quick, yeah. I'm sure. I've never seen a pink snake before. Yeah. Hello, Pinky. I named that one too. Ed, Ed named that one. <laughs> Below Pinky is Jigsaw, a corn snake. Okay. Normal red corn snake. Yeah, a very old one, like says seven years old, but he's got the face 
of an older corn snake. I only see that like bulldog looking face in really old corn snakes. So I think he's a little bit older than we may suspect. And uh, doing a weird head yeah, twitch what's thing the twitch right thing? Yeah, do you want to explain yourself there? All right, weirdo. But yep, that's Jigsaw who is going to be available after his quarantine wraps up, assuming health wise he's okay. Yep, I also got a twitchy snake now up here. Look at that flower twitch. That's like the breeding twitch. Dude, do you need a girlfriend? And finally, down at the very bottom, we have Flick. He's on the Where side. There you are. Flick is a beautiful red tegu. He unfortunately is missing a lot of his toes. Aww. So I'm guessing there were some humidity issues in his previous home, but he was so well socialized and he walks around just fine. He eats just fine. He's not available yet because we're actually bathing him every night to get all the stuck shed off of his toes. So he's kind of a work in progress right now, but I think he'll make an excellent tegu for somebody who ends up adopting him in the future. You are gorgeous. Yes, you are. His toes don't even bend right the ones Aww. that he has, the poor thing. Yeah, you poor guy. We're getting it off little by little. It's still pretty constricting though, so we don't want to like cause any issue by peeling, like forcing it off. So yeah. he's needing a lot of soaks. So now that we've gone over how we take in animals, how we set them up, and what we currently have available for adoption, we have a couple leopard geckos in back too, I should mention, but they're still in quarantine. And one's really skinny, so we're getting some fecals done on him. So we're not going to cover those two today, but there are two more leopard geckos in back. Anyway, now let's talk about how to adopt one of our animals in Adoption Island. If you come into our facility and you fall in love with an animal that's for adoption and you would like to bring it home, we're just going to chat with you first, strike up a conversation to make sure that you have all the resources you need to properly take care of that animal. This includes making sure you have a big enough enclosure for it, the right setup as far as internal stuff goes, the right lighting, the right heat, all of that stuff. We're not tyrants or anything as far as like you can only use this substrate for this animal. Like as you know if you've watched our channel long enough, we're very open-minded for multiple ways of keeping reptiles, but we do have size requirements for the animals in Adoption Island because these animals have sometimes come from less than ideal environments in their previous homes. I mean, look at the tegu. He's missing toes. Yeah. He's like shed, so. Exactly. So we want to do our best. Thankfully, a lot of the animals that get surrendered are very healthy and very well taken care of, but we want to make sure that especially, I mean, all of them, but especially the ones that have had rough pests where they've had less than ideal care, uh, we want to make sure that they don't ever experience that again in their life. So we really want to just make sure they go into a wonderful home when they get adopted. Unfortunately, sometimes people will come in and they have too small of an enclosure and they want to adopt a full grown bearded dragon and put it in say like a 20 gallon tank. It's happened before. And we have to awkwardly decline the adoption because that's not a large enough enclosure. We're not requiring like a six foot cage for an adult bearded dragon, but we do require at least a four by two by two so they have enough room to run around and explore. For a larger lizard like Flick, this red tegu, we would require like a six foot cage. If he was a full grown adult, we'd probably need him to go in like an eight foot cage. So we just ask for an enclosure that's the appropriate size for the current size of the animal they're adopting. Unfortunately, this has caused some stir with our customers who want to adopt an animal but want a cheap bearded dragon because they do have pretty small adoption fees uh, compared to like a high end fancy morph bearded dragon that's for sale, but they don't have a proper environment for it and we have to decline the adoption and they get upset and leave bad reviews online. If you look at our Google listing for snake discovery, we have some one star reviews just from people who wanted to adopt an animal and put it in way too small of an enclosure. And so we said no, but I'd much rather have that than us saying yes to everybody who wanted to adopt an animal in an adoption island, but give it a very bad or poor environment. So we're happy with the outcome. But assuming that you have an enclosure that's either all set up, ready to go, or you can grab stuff from us here, we are ready then to adopt out our animals. So in that case, we have an adoption waiver for the adopter to fill out. It basically just transfers ownership from us basically to its new owners. And this includes things like a statement saying that they will provide proper housing, food, lighting, and temperature requirements for the species. I won't go through the entire list, but basically it explains that the new owner will take proper care of that animal, including any health or vet visits that they may need to provide. This also transfers the ownership so that if the animal develops like a an upper respiratory infection in its new home, they can't expect us to pay for those vet bills. Like the animals are their responsibility at that point. We could of course take an animal back in, but then it would be re-surrendered to snake discovery and goes back into our adoption program. Like I mentioned earlier, we do ask for an adoption fee for our animals. And that's because not only do those adoption fees help cover the vet bills that are needed for some of the animals that are surrendered that are sick and need vet care, but we also want to prevent 
someone from coming in and adopting a free or five dollar reptile because then they can just resell it make a few bucks and just just flip the animal like we don't want that to happen at all so they do have adoption fees to help deter people from doing that but that essentially covers everything from the day the animal gets surrendered to the day the animal gets adopted here at snake discovery in our adoption island so i think it's working really well for us and to date we have ad uh, adopted out like i said about 250 reptiles and amphibians so far which is just crazy to me but it just makes me i don't know really excited for what we're able to offer in the minnesota area so yeah thank you for watching i hope you learned something new or maybe we answered some of your questions about adoption island or if you're thinking about running your own rescue maybe you were able to pick up some tips and tricks on the paperwork or the uh, policies and procedures that we have and if you again have suggestions on how we can make our adoption process even better please let us know in the comments below we are very open-minded and always willing to learn new things but yeah thanks again for watching thank you as always to our patreon backers for your very generous support as well and we'll see you next time come adopt our animals yeah, give them a second chance look how cute he is he needs a new home he needs a home oh